in the New Testament, the, the term for children of God is used in a few different ways. So in the most universalist sense, certainly Paul regards everybody as children of God. We are all God's offspring. He says to the pagans in Athens, that means children, we're all his children. And in Ephesians 3, he also says, you know, that he speaks of, he's talking about the father from whom every family in heaven on earth gets its name. So it's about the fatherhood of all. Well, in that case, in heaven and earth, does that even mean the angels too, or just the departed? Whatever it means, it's um, it's inclusive. There are other passages where where uh, children of God seems to be connected with imitation. So you're a child of God if you imitate Christ. So, for example, if you imitate Christ as a peacemaker, blessed are the peacemakers; they will be called children of God. So I know Christians who are not peacemakers, they're warmongers. <laughs> and I know Muslims who are peacemakers. And like, so according to Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, the children of God are those who imitate him. And you really get this in the Gospel of John. You're either, you're, you're, you're a child of the devil if you imitate the devil. You're a child of Abraham if you imitate Abraham, if the shoe fits kind of thing. So be like your father in heaven. How? Well, by imitating him in his generosity and kindness and goodness. And then there is probably something to do with um, where Christians can, who, who receive Christ, can say, you know, I, I experience um, God as father in a unique way myself because the spirit in me has, has, has um, Romans 8, has me crying out, Abba, Father, from within. And that's about intimacy. So we've got children by creation, children by imitation, and children by intimacy. And and I think it's just, we, we don't want to paint it all with one brush. Let's let the New Testament define it for itself.